You're listening to the Personal Development Through Martial Arts podcast, the podcast where the world's highest personal development experts and martial arts masters come together to empower and inspire you to become your strongest self and live the life that you truly want. Join host Bogdan Rosho, author, public speaker, and the founder of the first personal development through martial arts school in the world in the podcast where you become the hero. My next guest is a 23rd generation Kung Fu master, speaker, author, and high performance coach. Sifu Harinder teaches elite audiences and organizations the art of winning by entering the high performance zone. He has trained more than 150 military and law enforcement agencies and is the author of the upcoming new book, Mindboxing, How to Win the War Within, a proven training method for reaching peer performance in high stakes environments and is trusted by business leaders, law enforcement, athletes, and martial artists around the world. Please help me welcome Sifu Harinder Singh. We're here with uh, Sifu Harinder Singh, and I'm super excited to sit down and talk to him because uh, this is really going to be an insightful conversation, guys. He's a true master of uh, martial arts. He's done so many martial arts that I can't even begin to count. Uh, but most importantly, what I really, really enjoy about his background is that he's combining peak performance with his martial arts training. So, um, so this is going to be super, super valuable for you if you just tuned in and you started listening to this episode. Sifu Singh, how are you today? I'm doing fantastic, man. Thank you very much for having me on your, on your show. Yeah, I was just mentioning the fact that uh, for everybody listening in, you should see the video. Uh, Sifu Singh has this collection of swords and uh, blades behind him. And I thought, oh my God, can you imagine like being a robber and stepping into that house? Like I, I would just, I would just run away immediately. I wouldn't wait for anybody else to show up. Definitely. <laughs> well, let's hope that never happens. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so tell us a bit about yourself. I know you were an engineer in Silicon Valley and um, you were also training karate um, at that particular time, but share with us, you know, how did you start training martial arts? When did you start training? I started when I was six years old at the University of Toronto Academy of Karate and Judo. Um, I'm from Toronto, Canada. Uh, actually, I should stop saying that now because I'm 41 years old and I've lived uh, 21 years in California. So I, I think I'm, I'm Californian now uh, with regards to the amount of time I've spent here. But uh, you're, you always remember where you grew up. So I'm from Toronto, uh, Canada. I have a Canadian, I'm a Canadian and an American at the same time, but I live in California. Mm -hmm. And I was six years old when I started karate. My dad traveled a lot. He was a merchant marine. So he, he was on the ship a lot. And then he was in the shipping industry afterwards, and running the ports in various different countries and stuff like that. So he always wanted us to have an ability to defend ourselves and protect ourselves. So that's what got us into it. And I, and I the first was post you, Was, was your that? dad also training martial arts at the time? My dad, my dad hadn't trained martial arts directly, but uh, he was an athlete and uh, he was on the ship and stuff like that. So he thought it was very important. Uh, when I was born, there was uh, two pictures of uh, Bruce Lee and Muhammad Ali that were over my crib, you know, <laughs> that, that my dad had picked up from Hong Kong in one of his journeys. Uh, you know that actually Bruce Lee was planning on fighting Ali. That would have I, I, you know, I, I'd heard that they were, they were talking about something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. Please continue. No, no, not at all. And so I started in karate. I did karate from six to 19 years old. Uh, I competed, you know, in the uh, sparring tournaments. It did really well. I was a junior national champion in, kar in karate in, in, in Toronto. Uh, did really well on that circuit. And then uh, when I was 19 years old, I, I came to the United States, to California on a tennis scholarship and uh, computer uh, to pursue a, a degree in computer and electrical engineering. You, you came to the U.S. with the tennis uh, scholarship? Yeah, yeah. That is so funny because I just interviewed um, Sharan Srivatsa. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, no, Sharan, no. but he has a very, very similar story because uh, his dad told him that 
um, he, he felt that India wasn't necessarily the right country for Sharan because he was um, more of a free spirit and more creative. And anyway, the plan was to get him out of the country through a tennis scholarship. And that's exactly how he got out of India and into uh, the United States. I, I love the synchronicity right now. Awesome. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, and so I put the martial arts a little bit on hold while I was in university doing my education and, and, work, and working on tennis. And then what ended up happening when we were about to graduate um, from the University of California, there was a big bonfire, a big celebration. There was a, a beach called Ocean Beach in San Francisco. And we went to that beach for the celebration, but we were the last car to arrive. And we were about 100 yards away from the celebration. The parking lot was elevated and everybody was down at the beach. It was wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, at that time, a local gang, about 25 of them, showed up. They were iced out on various drugs. They just didn't look like they were there, and they were looking for someone. And uh, my roommate looked like the person that they were looking for. Mm. And before we knew it, all-out chaos broke out. You know, and this is like gang violence. It's totally different than what you see in the dojo. Mm. And it's. Um, formation fighting you know so that's the, i had been in street fights before and stuff like that growing up one-on-one -on -one, you know lots of sparring in the dojo that that's totally different than this kind of chaos with weapons and broken bottles and uh, two by fours and people swinging things all over the place and and a mass attack situation how many people, people fighting were there in your group pardon how many people were there in your group there was five of us five of and, you, right? uh, 25 of, uh, of them right so it was like of them. Mm -hmm, yeah, so mm -hmm. Five and you know, one. in that moment, you have a fight or flight kind of a, a, a yeah. moment where you have to decide what are you going to do. And you know, you can't blame some of the other guys. They, you know, it's, it's, people just run in that chaos. And Definitely. so I had to make a decision whether to run or not. And I decided not to run, but I didn't do anything, I didn't do anything heroic either. So it was just like they were chasing me around the cars. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even, mm -hmm. my, I couldn't even get to my, my friend. So they grabbed Definitely. him, took him to the center started beating on him and then they formed a formation around him and then those people were coming at me and it's not like in a movie where everybody comes one at a time so it looks more I like a football don't believe movie. it that's, yeah no, that, so, there's a surprise <laughs> yeah so it's it's, a, it's it was crazy and so i'm running and they're chasing me and i got hit on the head and you hit a guy back and yeah it's just chaos and um it was an intervention by a higher power that we got saved that day because the two guys they were looking for happened to walk by and they wow. noticed and forgot about us and went to them. And uh, I remember I dragged my friend to the beach and then I came back. By that time, the police, you could see they were coming down the hill. We were at the bottom of the hill. You could see them up at the top about a mile away. And I, I saw them getting into their cars to leave. And I still remember like yesterday, there was a white Cadillac and the dry, I tried to get a license plate, but you know, I was fuzzy, I'd been hit on the head. And so I'm trying to make it out. And then I see the driver step out and he's wearing a gray sweats, sweats, sweatsuit. And I saw him reach like that into his pants. And I just turned and started to run and I hear pop, pop, two gunshots went off. And that was the day my life changed, you know, it changed completely um, from a perspective was of, was he aiming for somebody or did he just like uh, shoot in, in the sky? I didn't, I didn't. he then, saw like, me, stepped out. And so I ran. So mm -hmm, I was the only mm -hmm. person there. So I, I wasn't about to find out who he was aiming or shooting. I just started running Definitely. before he could even shoot. And so then I just heard two shots, whether they were in my direction or up in the air. I'm not sure. But uh, that's, that's kind of what happened. And then after that day, I was filled with so much anger and so much rage, you know, that this happened. And um, you, your ego is totally bruised. Here's a, I was a karate champion and stuff like that. And now... You, you're just kind of in, in this state of uh, disillusion and disbelief and filled with just anger. Yeah. I think that was the big thing. And so from there, that's what set my journey on the, on the path. Um, I got a really good job uh, in the Silicon Valley as an engineer. So I was able to travel. I got paid a lot of money. So I said, okay, I'm just going to invest in myself. So I started to go around and find all the best masters possible in all the various different arts. And uh, that's how I started my journey. That's very interesting because a lot of people, maybe if they were not so invested in, in martial arts and so in love with martial arts, um, they would say, you know what, screw this martial arts. I, I dedicated most of my life to it and I cannot use it. You know, um, I'm still, you know, I, I couldn't handle the situation. But the fact of the matter, we, we both know that that's, you know, when, when five 
six, 10, 20 guys there, they're coming at you. You're not going to stand there to fight these guys or you're going to just, you know, if you can hit a few people, but run, right. You need to survive in that situation. But I love the fact that you decided on, look, this is just, um, an opportunity. Let me level up. Let me find somebody who can give me more answers to my questions and let me continue my journey. Mm. Well, I bet it was well, difficult for you. It, it was, I think the more, it was just driven by anger and, you know, like having dreams that, you know, like I'd be like Rambo and come onto that beach and then machine gun these guys down. That's kind yeah. of how yeah. angry I was, you know? Yeah. And so um, that led me to, you know, study with various different masters. I went to the, uh, a gentleman that uh, trained the Navy SEALs and I started to train with him. And at the same time, that's what got me into the Jeet Kune Do and then later into Wing Chun and stuff like that. But then at the same time, I, I okay, this is going to sound funny, but I wanted to learn the death touch. I was so pissed off. It's like, I want to touch yeah, people yeah, yeah. and kill them. And that's something that's pretty wrong with you if that's what you're thinking, right? And I said, nobody's going to teach this to me. And uh, so I started to get books and, and read about Dim Mok and all this kind of stuff. And, and then all of a sudden, I start to realize it's all based in Chinese meridians and Chinese medicine. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, I'm an engineer. I can figure this out. So I, I enrolled in, in a four-year Chinese medical uh, program, a ch Chinese medical <laughs> program, four-year program. I just enrolled. I was like, I'll figure it out. Okay, nobody's going to teach me. I think I'm freaking nuts. Okay, like, but, I, I can imagine like a, an enrollment process. So you want to you wanna learn Chinese medicine to heal people, right? No, I want to kill people. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. want to find the death touch. <laughs> but that's and, and, and that's you know that's that's what happens when you when you have a traumatic experience like that it, it changes you it changes your viewpoint there's a wake up of course but but there's an emotion uh that comes with it you know and um what ended up happening was in in my book there's a chapter all about that it's called from the death touch to the healing hand little did i know that this was all a journey and a, and a path that i was going to have to take and in that, I met my Tai Chi masters and the tradition that I'm a part of now that's over 2,000 years old. Mm -hmm. And that whole part was about self-discovery and healing and forgiveness and, and the ability to turn that anger and going there to, hey, I want to learn how to turn people off. Mm -hmm. you, you, you realize that you really are there to heal yourself and to let go and, and to even Absolutely. forgive your attackers and, and find out who you are. And that's a part of what your, your destiny and journey really is and how the universe uh, kind of intervenes in your way. So it was, it was a very cool experience, you know? Awesome. So tell me, tell, tell us a bit about your first encounter with your uh, Jeet Kune Do instructor. Um, you know, I, I uh, started to, to research and I had the Tao of Jeet Kune Do since I was 13 years old. Uh, that and Goren no Sho, the Book of Five Rings, that was given to me by my karate sensei. So I had it with me all the whole time. A couple months after this attack, this attack happened in June of 2001. On August 13th of 2001, I was in a very bad car accident. Mm. And that car accident actually saved my life because I was supposed to be in World Trade Center building number two on September 11th wow. at 8 a.m. in the morning on the 92nd floor. Wow. So, so now you have these, these crazy celestial events happening that started to change my perspective. And so I really hurt my back very badly. It saved my life, obviously. But then when I was, and I was an athlete, and I was going into my final year of, of tennis in, in mm -hmm. UC Davis. And then, I, then I was like, okay, I have to, what am I going to do? And I remember Bruce Lee, and I remember him getting injured and all that. And so I started to read and started to do the Sanshin Kata. It was the only thing I could do uh, mm -hmm. to start to heal because I couldn't lift weights, couldn't run, couldn't do the yes. regular stuff. So then I really started to dive into that and the philosophy and I started to research Bruce Lee more. And before I even got to my Jeet Kune Do instructor, as I healed from that, I then went into like MMA stuff like kickboxing and mm -hmm. um, a little bit of jujitsu and stuff like that because the, right down the street from my uh, work was which is now the greatest uh, UFC gym in the world, which is AKA American Kickboxing Academy, like Daniel Cormier and uh, Habib Norma Get Off and all these guys That's that awesome. come from their team. It was, it was literally walking distance. That's awesome. So like Javier Mendez, I remember him, was my first kickboxing coach. 
as a as a side note, as a quick side note, um, who do you think uh, will win, Connor or Habib? Uh, that's a tough question, man. Tough but question. Hmm? I, 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 you know, stylistically, it's a beautiful match. It's a, it's, it's going to be a beautiful tactical match because mm -hmm. one person is a much better striker and the other person is a much, much better grappler. Yeah. So the, the if Connor can get back up to his feet, he's going to get taken down. If he can get back up to his feet, uh, he he should win. You know, I think his timing mm -hmm. and his perception is really good. But at the same time. Uh, Habib's on another level, so yeah. I think that uh, it'll be a wonderful fight. Now, I want Connor to win. I like he's a Jeet man, so I want him to win. We, we share the same lineage, the same teachers. So uh, I did not know that about Connor that he has a JKD background. Yeah, uh, his coach John Cavanaugh is uh, a product of a gentleman by the name of Matt Thornton, mm -hmm. uh, who is. Uh, was one of the first Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belts in America, but also a Jeet Kune Do uh, practitioner uh, from back in the day. And he's also a student of one of my teachers, Daniel Duby de la Verne, who lives in Reunion Island, who's a Jeet Kune Do man and a Savat and a Wing Chun, actually Wing Chun man as well. Mm. And so a lot of those strategies have, have kind of been passed down. And if you watch Connor fight, he fights very simply. It's mm -hmm. simply to simplify. So it's just... He, he, he plays the space and time instead of mm. what everybody else plays techniques. Mm. So you can... Really I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A different, it's a different uh, game. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I've, I've got to go, go with him, man, uh, uh, from, from an emotional perspective. But Definitely. From tactical, I, we can watch. I wanted him to win the Mayweather fight so much. Yeah. 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 That, that just... That just was never going to happen. You know, I, I think he did really well to make it as far as mm -hmm. he did. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I've, that I've, been boxed wild. I, I've boxed a lot. I've boxed with pros. Yeah. And the thing is that when you have just five tools available to you with the jab, cross, hook, uppercut, overhand, and it's in that rule set, and they've been doing it since they're children. Yeah. You, totally different. As great as you can. And the, the beautiful part is that he lasted. You see, the, to, to last that long with a pro. That people don't understand that. Mm -hmm. That's insane. Okay. Yeah. So that was it was to me it was a great he won in that sense because if you put Mayweather in an MMA ring, he wouldn't last no a way. minute. Definitely. Right? Definitely. So mm -hmm. so so I think he proved his point. And then yeah. what you you get in the ring with a pro boxer, you just last. You last, you won. Because you went into their their rule set. You know, if you try to beat the pro boxer, unless you're a pro boxer, that's not gonna happen in boxing. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let, let me ask you, like, you had a great career in um, engineering, right? Um, you were traveling, you were investing in yourself. What made you decide, you know what, it's going to be about martial arts, it's going to be about helping people heal, it's going to be about helping people with their performance, I'm just going to contribute to the world in this sense. I met somebody that uh, was a very successful billionaire. Yes. And I asked, him, I asked him a question. I said, so, you know, what would be your number one piece of advice for me? And he said to me, find something you love to do and find something you're really good at and do that. You know, and those words really stuck with me. Yes. Because you know, engineering, I, man, I was, I was a hack in the sense that I could do it, but I wasn't the I best. It. I did yeah. more based on my relationships. I would make good relationships with other engineers and help them get them to do my work for me in the sense that that was why I was picked because I didn't sit, I, I got the job done. I got the job done using other skills, but I wasn't the best engineer. Mm -hmm. I could do the job and I was successful at it, but I wasn't one of those geniuses that loved it. I hated every minute of it. I only picked engineering because, oh, in my mind, it was like, okay, Silicon Valley, dot com boom days, become an engineer, make lots of money, mm -hmm. buy a sports car, be rich and successful. So that, and then, and then the, the, the celestial events that happened by being attacked and then missing 9-11 and hurting my back started to make me ask the question, well, what's the real purpose here and why am I really here? And that was the first mm -hmm. time I asked that question. And martial arts to me came easy. It was just always, natural. It, mm -hmm. it was so natural. I could see a move and do it. You know, I could, I could grasp the concept. I could, do things a lot faster and, it, and I realized, okay, wait, I have a, a natural tendency here and I love to teach. Mm -hmm. So um, that was the other thing. Even when I was in karate, I started teaching when I was 13 years old 
when I played tennis, I was teaching all the time. Yes. So I loved to teach and I loved to see the joy in somebody else when they were able to figure something out, you know? And so I said, okay, man, I'm good at this. Um, I love to teach. It's not a job to me. So people ask me all the time, like, how do you, how do you train so much? How do you motivate yourself? I, I think motivation is, is BS. It's the biggest BS in the world. Yeah. Motivation. If you know who you are, and you know what you want to do, you don't need to be motivated to do it. Somebody doesn't have to tell you to be great. Absolutely. It's a matter of who you know you are and who you choose to be. If you are the person, you are the person. If you're not, you're not. No Absolutely. Way. And that's what, and martial arts, that's, that's the beauty of it. You know, when we look at a higher punching and kicking and grappling and throwing and weapons, those are the, 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 the path the the means to the end yes. but the end is self-discovery it's a journey of self-discovery who are you really can you answer that question who are you and you're tested you can't run away when you're being crushed on the ground when you're sparring somebody who's better than you you have to face your fears you have to understand who you truly are and and to discover that that's one of the greatest gifts you can get and who you truly are always varies sometimes even from day to day from week to week from stages of your life to another Mm. Who, do, who do you feel you are right now? I'm a master student. And I'm here to teach. So yeah. I, my mission here is courage, confidence, and clarity. That's what I'm here for. Mm -hmm. um, and martial arts is a vehicle. Uh, speaking on stages and working with executives is another vehicle. Yes. So my purpose here is to serve and uh, serving through martial arts and serving people to understand who they truly are, to discover that is to lead them on that path of self-discovery. So mm -hmm. whether mm -hmm. they do it in the martial arts realm, I also have a lot of executive clients. I'm headed to Toronto on, on Saturday to give a big, another big speech. You know, I, I give a lot of uh, uh, kind of performance, high performance talks and speeches. Yes. I'm going to be working with IA Securities. That's one of Canada's largest financial advisors um, conglomerate. Let's, just let's talk a bit about that. How, how do you help your clients get to peak performance and maintain it? Well, it's, it comes down to mindset, right? 90% of success in business or on the battlefield comes down to mindset. And um, so one of the things I discovered in martial arts earlier on, early on, especially when I started to work with the various agencies. So I've had the honor of working now with over 150 elite military police and government agencies. And yeah, I teach them how to kick ass for sure. But the thing that, that was what, that's what got me in the door, but what really helped my career was a big part of my teaching from what I learned from my teachers was the mental state, the ability to calm yourself down and make yourself comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. The ability to get right here, right now in what I call the high performance zone. And instead of being up in your mind, thinking about what's going to happen, worrying about what's going to happen, getting engulfed in fear and going down that cycle, that was more important than the techniques and strategies. You can have the best teachers, lineages, techniques and strategies. When, when, when you know, everything gets crazy, your heart starts to pound. If you can't calm yourself down and slow time down and bring yourself right here, right now, that's when you have your superpowers available, and which I call, there's three of them. The ability to connect, adapt, and create. Connect mm -hmm. to yourself, connect mm -hmm. to your opponent, connect to the environment. That allows you to listen, watch. And then when you're listening and watching, it allows you to be like water and adapt. And then from there, you get to create. So you can either be reacting, that means you're in the past, you're reacting to a situation. You could be responding, means you're in the moment, you're kind of mm -hmm. interacting. But then you can go into the future and set up what you want because then you're creating. And so all that comes from, first and foremost, being able to practice stillness. And, and that's what I share with these executives. So whether, whether you're an athlete or an executive, there's three things people can really train. Uh, if you think about it, you can train your body, your mind, and your craft. Everybody takes and spends all their time working on the craft. Yes. It's like, okay, these sales strategies, these are the engineering technologies, these are the communication methods. But they don't spend time working on the mind and the body and its connection together. Because man, the living being, the creating individual is much more important than any style or system. So by developing themselves, they're going to be more successful. So mm -hmm. which version basically do they bring to the game? How do they deal with tension, anxiety, stress, fear, and overwhelm? 
And that's, that's really what I, what I really helped them with. Hey, sorry to interrupt the interview. I'll let you get back to it in a moment. Let me just ask you, do you want more financial freedom in your business so that you have time for the important things in your life? Would you like to level up your business and become a black belt in business success? Let me help you. I will personally take a look at your business and show you exactly how you can make it more profitable so that you enjoy more financial freedom and more time with your loved ones. Get in touch with me over social media. Links are in the description. Send me a message with the text business breakthrough and we will schedule an appointment and you will get a free coaching session where I teach you exactly how to make your business more profitable without putting in more hours. And this is going to be only for the first five people who get in touch with me this week. So check the description, get in touch with me on social media, send me a message with the text business breakthrough, and let me help you take your business to the next level. And do you find that once they get this down and they really integrate this aspect in their lives and uh, it really makes sense, this idea of being present, being in the moment and practicing stillness, do you find that there's a direct correlation between um, their financial performance, their relationships, um, their health uh, with keeping this, this kind of state of uh, presence? 100%. Mm-hmm. 100%. It's like version 2.0 versus version less than you know um mm. for me i learned i learned how to connect to my wife and my son through mm. martial arts yes because i learned to connect to my opponent yes that's when i learned connection right otherwise i was mm. always up in my head thinking so i learned to connect to my opponent uh, have empathy feel what they're feeling and really be in that relationship and then that attribute carried over to okay i'm going to connect with my my son and my wife with the same intensity yeah yeah definitely the first time that i felt that was when we started doing chi zao in our wing chun training for everybody who's listening in and you're not sure what chi zao is um it's a type of drill where you kind of connect hands with your uh, opponent and you feel you kind of use your tactile senses to feel what your opponent will do so you really need a, a very very sharp sense of awareness when you're doing that but what you discover is that you're starting to become more sensitive to that bubble, let's say, of you and your partner to what you're feeling, what he's feeling. But in time, it kind of expands a lot more to, to the outside and you kind of start to feel everything. You start to notice everything. It's more like a 360 degrees state of awareness. Yeah. I, is that is that the way that you uh, see it? Like absolutely, hmm? absolutely. You know, um, in in Tai Chi or in Chi Sao or in Wing Chun, um, you know, they they say there's three stages of cultivation, right? Mm-hmm. First, there's stillness and stillness. Yes. Then there's stillness and movement, and then there's stillness and movement under chaos. Mm, so I love that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you're stillness and stillness, okay, you're doing your your meditative Meditation. practice. You're mm-hmm. you're breathing. You're standing. Mm-hmm whatever you're going to, you know, whatever you choose to do. Um, then you do your form. The form then teaches you obviously structure, but it's, it's now, again, cultivating the stillness and the movement. The movement. Mm-hmm. And then the drill, Chi is supposed to be a drill that bridges it. Now you have stillness and movement under a, a, a chaos, which is somebody else trying to stop you from doing what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so now can you maintain the stillness? Can you maintain the connection while somebody's trying to stop you from doing that? And then that should be then a level then that allows you then to get into a fight when you're uncon- disconnected and, and build your perception. And um, you're right, it's 360 degree awareness that you build. And then the next level, having stillness when somebody's punching you in the face with this big ass glove. <laughs> yeah, that's next. It's next. To, and then you got to be able to take a punch. Because yeah. what ends up happening is that there's a fear response and an emotional response that's, that's within us that we have to really work out. And uh, that's what debilitates people is, is that idea. They're afraid of being hit. Mm-hmm. So the moment you're afraid of being hit, you put up a shield, you put up a barrier, you're protecting your center. The yeah. highest level is if you don't have a center to protect, nobody can harm you. Then you're free. 
Ah, that is so deep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's let's, really what it is. Let, let's simplify this uh, this idea a bit more because um, it's it's very profound, and um, I love it for everybody listening and to tap into this wisdom. So when you say that by not having a center, there's nothing to perturb, there's nothing to um, um, harm. What do you what do you mean specifically? Okay, so when I say I have a center to protect, I, me, my ego is involved, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's what's involved. So we say that, you know, the yin-yang aspect, if you take a look at from Taoist philosophy and martial arts, that kind of really guides the way. You have structure. Excuse me. You have structure and you have unconditional yielding. Mm -hmm. The structure, your form, your mind, mm -hmm. your body, the alignment, the breath, the energy. But then mm -hmm. that's what you work on in training. You task the mind to do that. Yes. But when you go to fight, the mind has to be open and completely empty for the experience between yourself and the opponent. Yes. When you're empty, where that means that you are not putting up a barrier. When I put up a barrier and say, I don't want to be hit. I don't want to lose. I don't want to experience pain. I am telling myself the story. And now when I'm telling myself the story, I'm slowing myself down. I'm taking my processing power away from the experience and into myself. Mm -hmm. But when mm -hmm. I no longer have a center to protect, when I'm just free for the experience, mm -hmm. then I'm free to adapt and change to anything that may come. Yes. And I feel that this applies so much to relationships in terms of uh, being, it's, it's the same whether you're connecting with your loved one. Um, yes. And it's, it's the same if, if you're focusing on me, myself, I want to win, I want to uh, get rid of this argument quickly, or I want to go through this negotiation successfully with, and you know, get as much money as possible. Yeah, you lose and you rob yourself of the experience of being there and, and enjoying um, the actual experience. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so you currently have, um, you own more than 50 schools, right? Um, in the States and um, outside of the U.S. Um, what was, how did you decide to open several schools and um, what are the systems that you put into place to make it work? So uh, to, to clarify, I have 50 schools that are affiliated to me. They're mm -hmm. owned by the individual instructors. So oh, I am, I'm their head, head teacher. And so mm -hmm. I teach them the systems and certify them and they, they belong to my organization and they then teach the curriculums in mm -hmm. their schools. Mm -hmm. uh, Got it. So when I started, um, when I decided that I'm going to do this full time, I wanted to be a teacher of teachers. So I wanted to, that was my business plan from the yes. beginning was that I wanted to be in the train the trainer business and um, down the road and still down the road, I will one day open an actual physical school. But uh, what I wanted to do was I wanted to work with people that wanted to run schools. And so I started to put into place, here are different programs that you can put into your school. So programs for children, if they wanted to teach law enforcement, there'd be a different program over there. Mm -hmm. And then our, our core curriculum is Jeet Kune Do. And for those who don't know, that's, that's Bruce Lee's influence. It means the way of the intercepting fist. And in that art, we take a look at all five ranges of empty hand combat and weapons as well. So you have to be able to kick and punch and trap and grapple uh, standing, which is wrestling and punching, and then on the ground. And then you have to be able to pick up any kind of a weapon, especially an edge weapon, a knife or a blunt weapon, a stick, and be able to use that. You have to be able to fight multiple opponents. Uh, you have to have the mindset that allows you to stay still and present. Mm -hmm. So our, our whole methodology is kind of broken down into uh, stillness first, then strategy. So how do the tools apply within the strategy? And then skill development, which is attributes. So mm -hmm. attributes, speed, sensitivity, timing, spatial relationship, distancing. How do we develop those attributes that allow you to pull off your tools and, and execute your strategies? So I, I, I teach these various programs that are structured that way uh, for my, my students who are instructors. And then they go out and they run schools. And some of them have 200 students. Some of them have, uh, you know, 15 students. Mm -hmm. So it all depends on, you know, some do it full time. Some, some have four or five schools. 
uh, some do it as, as something they love to do on weeknights and stuff like that. So. Um, but I'm sure they, you also teach them how to actually go to their schools and, um, um, you know, attract students, keep students, level up their students. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a big part of it. Uh, one of the key things that I learned with my exposure to being in corporate America for, you know, eight years was the organizational structure was um, customer service. And, mm -hmm. and that's something very important. Uh, we're really in the service business, you know, and you're there to serve your student. And if you come from a place of really caring about their development, number one, come from a place of great appreciation for what you do and you spread that. And then you also understand that you're not in sales, you're in serving. So when you serve somebody, you're helping them discover what they need. And the business we're in is courage, competence, and clarity. Mm -hmm. We're not in the business of punching and kicking, of Wing Chun, of Chiku Do. We're not in that business. That's what they really come here for us. And, and yes, they're good. they should learn um, how to defend themselves. That's a big part of it. Because these days, martial arts, for me, if you see what the world is in, it falls into three categories. All mm -hmm. martial arts will fall into three categories. Number one, there's a traditional basis. Okay, so it's a traditional art. It's been around for a long time. Uh, tai Chi, Wing Chun, uh, Karate, Taekwondo, traditional based art. Then you have sport, sport based combatives, right? Things mm -hmm. like boxing and wrestling and Jiu Jitsu and MMA. Mm -hmm. So then you have sport. And then you have reality based or street or combatives, things that are more military based systems, things like, like Krav Maga and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So the Krav Maga focuses on here is what you must do to finish determination tactics. Sport talks about, okay, here's where we're doing this thing within a rule set. And then over here, tradition takes a look at, you know, a little bit of everything, but it kind of has more of the discipline, more of the lineage, more of the history. Mm -hmm. But the idea really is, and the, the conversation these days with the internet keyboard, keyboard warriors is which one is the best, right? And I think that's the serious <laughs> conversation to have. The conversation really has to change to what can we absorb from all of them? Because you need to be able to fight on the street you need to have sport methods that allow you to take a punch, eat a punch, go down to the ground, see if you have the resolve, build the timing angle and distance. And then you need traditional systems that allow you to develop structure and discipline and the ancient training methods, which all have value. But if you train them compartmentalized, you're missing out on the big picture. And I think that's the biggest thing these days because everybody's always on the internet talking about this and talking about that. Instead, I personally feel they should just go and train. It's just a waste of time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, I think just like having more conversations like this is definitely helpful in opening people's eyes. Um, from In my experience, when I discovered Wing Chun, it was like, oh my God, Wing Chun is the best. There's no other martial art aside from that. And that mostly came from the teaching method, right? But once you open your eyes and you understand that everything has something to offer and it's fine if you choose one martial art and you do that because you love it, that's, that's, that's great. But don't expect, you know, don't, don't have the idea that it's the only thing out there, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because awesome. fighting is patterns right? Fighting mm -hmm. is patterns. It all comes down to relationships or patterns. Everything's a pattern. So, um, you know, the thing happens. I have a lot of Wing Chun Kung Fu brothers and sisters. I'm a proud representative of the Liangshan lineage mm -hmm. through Sipu Bender, and I love the art. And similarly, the, the Tai Chi, I love it. Um, but the thing is that th they can be used for fighting completely against the other styles, but it's like that's a Lego block, and how does it fit against boxing? How does it fit mm. against wrestling? Absolutely. So that, that question has to be asked because each of these different arts have a different pattern of timing, angle, and how they cover distance. So if you're only training with Wing Chun, then you are learning that timing how angle. How to defend distance. against yeah. Wing Chun, definitely. Exactly. And so who's going to straight punch you in the street? Who's going to tanza yeah. you in the street? <laughs> exactly. And so, and, and so that's, that's the thing. And so you, you take your principles, but you have to take the principles, the wisdom or the knowledge, and you have to gain wisdom of its usage. It means its application against ba, 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 boxing, wrestling, jujitsu, mm -hmm. taekwondo, karate. Mm -hmm. And you have to, that's the lab. That's the experience. Otherwise, you're just, you're just staying in this box. But Definitely. take the art 
and find the beauty in how it expresses against all these other things. And then you'll truly be on a step of functionalizing and you'll fall in love deeper with your art. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so let me ask you, what, what is your vision for, um, uh, for your school and for your life? What, what is the direction that you're going? So I think that, uh, I've just finished a book. Uh, it's going to be coming out, I think, in January now. Mm -hmm. We're waiting on the, the final dates from the, the publisher. And it's called Mind Boxing, How to Win the War Within. So one of my goals is I want to serve a million people. I want, to, I want a million people to be able to get out of this war that's happening within. Because whether we're in martial arts or we're a regular person, the thing is that the enemy is really within that voice that tells mm -hmm. us what we can and we cannot do. And I want them to have a method to uh, release the limitations that they put on themselves, to release the past stories that they may have told themselves or their teachers or their parents or what they've learned and, and learn to see the world in this wonderful, limitless uh, capacity that it really is. Because we have mm -hmm. such a little time on earth, such little time here in this yeah. realm. So what can we do to maximize it and to honestly express ourselves? That is something very hard to do. But when you do that, you're free. You know, you're mm. totally free. But the biggest fear everybody has is what everybody thinks of. The biggest mm. fear everybody has is not being good enough. So I want to have people to get rid of that fear. And on a martial arts perspective, I want people to be able to, once again, use it as a vehicle for self-discovery. To have, uh, I, there's the Fs that I use. It's, martial arts should be fun. You should be creating family. Okay. Mm -hmm friendships and mm -hmm. you should be getting in the flow. so if you can get in the flow and when you just things just going you've built fun and friendships and they must be also functional so once you have that and you then you can deal with the fight and flight the the hun and the po the, the the higher consciousness part of yourself and then you can deal with the 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 animal side and balance them you can get into fluidity and flow you develop yes. functional fitness and friendships I think that's, that's my main message is to bring the martial arts together and not have them divided because we live in a world where everything is so divided. But all of us martial artists, regardless of our background, style, system, or lineage, we're all the same because we all choose to punch each other in the face or choke each other out and sit on the couch and watch TV and eat potato chips. You know what I'm saying? So there's so much more similarity. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that we are on all the same path for. And instead of the, you know, the divide that you see. So that, that's kind of, that, that's my vision. That's awesome. That's awesome. So um, guys, definitely get in touch with uh, Sifu Singh. Um, where can they, what is the best place where people can get in touch with you and attend one of your events or um, of course, order the book when it's coming out in January? Yeah, so they can go for the book. They can go to mindboxing, M-I-N-D, boxing.com. Mm -hmm. And my martial arts websites are the G JKD athletics.com and yes. sifusing.com. Awesome. And Guys, you will have, you'll find all the links in the uh, description. Go ahead and connect with Sifu Singh. Um, it was a great pleasure. And let me ask you, like, if you could ask everybody listening in one question, what would that be? What are you doing to discover who you truly are? Mm. Awesome. Awesome. Guys, let us know in the comment section. This is a great question. Excellent. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Sifu Singh, thank you for your time, your wisdom. Thank I'm looking you. forward to more um, content and more books from you. Why not? Thank you very much. Hey, thank you so much for tuning into this episode. And if you're ready for more financial freedom, for more time to spend with your loved ones or doing what you're really, really, really passionate about, send me a message over social media, connect with me, links are in the description, and I will give you a free business breakthrough session where I will show you exactly how you can make your business more profitable so that you live a happy and fulfilled life with your loved ones. I'll see you soon.